All right, we are officially live. Let me just send a message to the Discord that we are, in fact, live. Perfect. Apply to my own message at everyone, not at Steve Monty Scott. are live with week seven heaven once again right heaven's on time. always heaven's always here for this even though it's late i appreciate it heaven the viewers are always appreciated because it's fun that people watch it live that's the whole reason i do it yeah, it's good to get uh, it's good to get a, a at least some of the server together for to reflect on on the cool stuff that happened this week yeah it's fun about it. i agree and we've got we've got a packed uh a packed uh schedule ahead of us so we'll let a couple people filter in here we got evan we got sam we got ryan Ooh, cool. lots of people here firefalls oh, too firefalls excellent well, we got plenty of plenty of fun stuff to watch. Welcome all. Love yeah, to have very, you. very exciting week with a lot of win and ins, or a lot of just you know people who made it in because they won. Yep. Um, basically, every division had important matches in week seven, which is awesome. Um, my. I, our division had a lot of didn't matter matches <laughs> fully but there was some there were some seeding matches like mine yeah, and there were Ryan's some matches but match uh, was like for seeding but tay tay versus me was irrelevant for both of us um mm -hmm. and sam versus uh who did sam play sam who did you play i wrote it down lackey sam versus lackey also uh only for only for respect mm. and uh that one was a pretty sweet match also actually it, it was very cool i considered i considered sending one of the games but there's just so much heat this week so many cool things there was there's a lot of heat there's so much heat that i have honorable mentions for the week that we're not going to actually watch but um we got a we got a couple people chilling waiting for us to get get going in earnest so let's go ahead and do just that uh speaking of weekly heat it's my first first day of the season first day of the year above 80 fahrenheit here in central ohio it was a bit of a bit of a hot one today and yep. it was it was nice with my windows open and the door the doors open and a nice breeze through on my second floor and now it's time to record, so the doors are shut, the windows are closed, and it's starting to get a little warm in this office. Yep. Same for, uh, it's not that hot for me anymore, I'm in Maryland, but during today, I I work at a school with no AC or anything, and it was, it got a little, a little hot, especially for some of the students. So Yeah, I've, I, I've, I've okay. been in that swamp in the summer. It gets, it gets good and hot. Mm -hmm. Just mm -hmm. not. Not quite yet. Not the most fun. Yeah. No. Yeah, and today was the first day of it being something notable, at least. So. Yeah. You know, we'll see how they how they handle it, especially the little ones as time goes on. Yeah. You you work in uh, elementary school? You said yeah. Yeah. I tutor. Elementary. I tutor gotcha. K through three. So. Gotcha. Cool. 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 All right. Well, uh, the first match we're watching here is a. Uh, important for both players, right? Bohm is winning in uh, into playoffs, and Colby is both Dream Crush and Go Undefeated, which is yes. an exciting place to be, right? I love to Dream Crush, especially <laughs> in situations where I, it is irrelevant to me otherwise, but that is not the case for Colby. Colby is looking at a uh, a potentially undefeated season, which was awesome. Um, and if Colby wins this game, it's his second undefeated season in the last three seasons. Yes. So that's really impressive. Absolutely. Um, 
and you know we don't really go in for uh worrying about spoilers here in the weekly heat uh colby yeah. does win this set uh but game game one was an absolute blowout right um mm-hmm. the um the kilowattrol lives lived a bug buzz just barely uh colby takes two ko's on turn one uh and then bone was just didn't really have much of a chance to uh to get back into it you know the lux ray taken 40 percent off of a resisted thunderbolt so it was yeah it was pretty much close closing up shop there game one but it was a nightmare turn one a yeah. miss on the icy wind into into the the one percent live or three percent live or something yeah, like, like a lot of, yeah. single digit percent um but same lead for game two and we'll go ahead and fire it up or for bohm at least right same same lead of uh valiant and yen mega but just better plays on this turn one and not missing any icy wins and it does help and he he looks like it's it's like it it feels like bohm is in such a great spot right the terra steel means yen mega lives no problem uh huge close combat even with the chopperberry doing plus over 60 percent uh a nice protect there and trading the, the iron valiant but still in a good position here yen mega still looking looking awesome yeah it's just kills the, kills the cleaver it. yeah and the crit is nice we are gonna see yeah this, but uh this gudra live on like one percent here in a second but uh still feels totally winnable right i i'm thinking oh we're going to a game three right um, yeah for sure this this feels bohm favored right now. yeah 50 percent into a resisted liquidation because our aquanid's broken nice protects shadow ball that's i think the one that lost it right yeah that's just that ends it pretty much you can't come back from gudra getting that attack off anymore yeah, and then just barely squeaks by. They don't. They don't get to go to a game three. No, and, uh, I would have Colby's liked to have seen season. one. I think I would too. Uh, but Colby manages to keep the undefeated regular season, which is super excellent. impressive. Yeah, uh, quite quite pot. You know, definitely one of the one of the best to not win at all. Um, I hesitate to, to for there to be any kind of goat discussion. Uh, because I, I don't think we have any multiple championship winners other than Tay. Uh, and fully, like, four or five, something like that, across VBLS and VBLN, Tay championships. Mm-hmm. So, like, you know, yeah. comment. It's also, yeah, it's hard to have a GOAT discussion about people who haven't won at all, because I feel like True. a lot of that's going to be small but- sample. Greatest, you know, I mean, greatest not win, win at all. He he is a you know, sixty like seventy percent lifetime VBLS regular season win rate, which and is that's very with, impressive. That's with the season where he went winless, he, right? Exactly <laughs> because of the challenge that he had. So super impressive. For yeah. Sure. So seven zero oh seven seven zero, right? So oh yeah, Ray is a Ray is oh, a Ray is too. Ray is a repeat champ. I apologize. Uh, yeah, Tay has won the most seasons, four, four or five. Uh, yeah, amazing even, by Colby, really, really, really well played season, of course, and a well played set with very good EVs. Came in very clutch on the Gudra and uh, the Primarina, probably as well. Yeah, definitely. Uh, well done to Colby and well done to Bohm. Um, I know Bil- building his heart out over there in the olds discord that uh that we we all do some prepping in and uh yes. whew, that was a that was a rough one uh i believe bohm most most appearances in weekly heat so put that one on the put that one on the resume Bohm's team is is very fun very cool yeah so, and the, makes sense. the the beefy bulky pokemon that made up a lot of his team uh made for often lots of turns for cool things to happen too which helps i think (laughs) yep for Uh, sure all right let's move on here so this is ls versus partis this is game one of their set 
Um, LS does end up winning this set, uh, and uh, in fact, this match as well, or th this game as well. But um, the reason I want to show this match uh, is just to remind everybody that we we give we give Incineroar a hard time in draft, but. Um, it's still very good, and we have to make it expensive for that reason. So just keep an eye on Incineroar and how impactful it is in this first game here. Starts off uh, in turn one. Two, you know, generally... Uh, well, the... Uh, what's... Um, uh, Bruxish is the name. Bruxish does get intimidated, but just killed right away by the Chen Pao, right? So mostly don't really care. Of course, uh, surprised to see... Surprised not to see the Aqua Jet into the, the Colossal a little bit. Yeah, so l a little bit less surprising when we learn that it's uh, Power Herb, right? Power Herb, yeah, of um, course. East, yeah, as, opposed to, as opposed to Weakness Policy. Yeah. Um, but, you know, a, a Terra Rock could have very easily still allowed it to uh you know get uh steam engine or even just a resisted you know water or something like that could have uh, mm -hmm. could have done it but um yeah knock off revealing the power herb and crunch killing the uh, the bruxish there on the first turn pretty nice uh and now and then, not and getting the off the just, room yeah yep just has to sit there pretty rough Perfect Terra for the situation. Takes yeah. more damage. Incineroar gets a kill. Is gonna uh, parting shot here, I believe, on this next turn. Um, yeah, we do get the yeah, nice protect. Or, oh, knock, oh knock, off. knock off. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But yeah, yeah, just sitting around, doing doing good utility stuff. Chip damage. Item scouting. Chunks the. Yep. And Incineroar is gonna come back in here and really just make make iron hands not nearly as uh as scary of a pokemon it's gonna yeah fake it out intimidate it and just let let its partner let its partners look good right makes mm -hmm. the dragalgy look good makes the chin pal look good and uh yeah. all it takes is broken moves broken typing and broken abilities incineroar is good even in a format that does not play to its strengths. I mean, I think we've seen in my understanding is in, in ladder and and tournament play right now, the reason we actually don't even see Iron Hands that much is, is because Incineroar does the job kind of better and also it neutralizes a lot of yeah. what Iron Hands wants to do with that the intimidate. We just saw. Exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah. and so it makes sense that in this matchup Incineroar kinda goes crazy. Yeah, um, Incineroar also uh, important in game two. I believe it reveals a parting shot as well, and just starts starts throwing those around to deal with the the special attackers as well. And uh, uh, Oranguru does come in game two. Uh, it's kind of a longer a longer game, but uh, and that plays to Incineroar's strengths. You want a longer game. Yeah. So uh, yep, yeah, LS does end up winning this set. On, with largely the power of uh, Incineroar plus plus Chin Pao. Chin Pao. Yeah. Chin Pao's still good, <laughs> would have guessed. We talked best, a lot about Incineroar, but Chin Pao is ghost type, really good. Best ghost type in this matchup. <laughs> <laughs> True. Uh, the Dragonair, also pretty fun in uh, with throwing some Terra Normal Extreme Speeds later mm -hmm. on in the set as well. So If you haven't watched the full set, definitely worth uh, worth your time um all right so now well before we do this let's talk about uh, i got some honorable mention matches uh, that we're not going to watch but that are very good um the samax versus lackey match is fun is, is a fun one to watch um the some weird bot showed up and started doing like <laughs> pokemon stadium commentary in the chat which was weird um but you know fun and relatively harmless yeah, I got um, a chuckle out of it. 
Yeah. Especially when, yeah, we're just watching it on replays. I imagine live it would have annoyed me if I had, yeah. if I was playing it. Absolutely. But, um, but, but yeah, in retrospect, I think it's funny for sure. Yeah, um, the whole three is a three game set for basically no stakes, uh, and it managed to be like very good back and forth gameplay. Uh, the whole match, uh, Samax did end up winning that one. Well done to Samax. It's always nice to w- end the season on a win. So well done. Especially there. a scraggy win. Yeah, especially a scraggy <laughs> win. Camo um, versus Braff, also a solid three game set. Uh, both players making good adjustments throughout. Um, also worth your time. Um, the Daddy versus Heaven set is fun. Uh, Registeel gets past a double calm mind from uh, Latius in game one, and then gets blasted with a crit heat wave and dies anyway. It's uh, just pretty, so sad. Pretty brutal. <laughs> so sad. But uh, but fun to watch. Uh, Red Jolteon versus Joey Joke Star. Uh, we all got to learn how punching glove works in real time. <laughs> to the uh, to the detriment of uh of urshifu unfortunately but um and then we've got another uh heat set to check out here uh the corve palmot no i haven't just just because you got kind of ranched doesn't mean doesn't mean the latius wasn't fun it was Uh, such a fun it was such a fun set yeah very cool Um, stuff you brought heaven we um we we've also got the the core of Palmot bit of uh, prep that Steve had here for versus the um, uh, the Arch- Archaludon that didn't come but uh, entrainment Volt Absorb to give Corviknight Volt Absorb and then no weaknesses in the rain it was pretty sweet um, it did get used although it was mostly unnecessary. Uh, because Corviknight is just very bulky anyway, um, and the Archer Ludon didn't come, so the that particular uh, immunity ended up not being super relevant. Uh, the Hurricane was very nice uh, to take yep. advantage of the rain, and then just the classic Citrus Berry Iron Defense Body Press Roost. Beefy Terrifier yep. Corv was, uh, was pretty fun. Uh, ultimately unsuccessful, but, you know. We- cool ideas. Yeah, really week, cool ideas weekly heat Steve. doesn't uh, doesn't always measure success in uh, victory and losses. Uh, sometimes it's it's about the uh, it's about the crazy sets we made along the way. Uh, so the main the remainder of the uh, the the stream here is going to be showing uh, watching matches from our O three to four three players. Right, uh, Tux, Electric, and Firefalls all started the season 0-3. Uh, lots of, di- you know, joking around. Oh, I'm doing terribly. Maybe some some non-jokey uh, frustration as well uh, early in the season from some of them. But uh, all three turned it around. Went, you know, quadruple runner to to finish the regular season four and three. Extremely impressive. Uh, very tight play from all of them. Uh, we're going to start with the uh, electric what? versus donut uh, game two. Uh, yep. I mean, it was just it's it's crazy to see that once in a season of three to four three to have three teams do it is totally wild. That's very cool. That's awesome stuff. Um, well done to all three of them. Um, so. Yeah. This uh, game two here, um, Electric won game one, um, sort of in spite of a lot of RNG not in their favor. Uh, mm-hmm. A lot of relevant Sandsteer Storm misses. Uh, kind of won, you know, they kind of won anyway. Um, yeah. With uh, with good Sableye weather resetting and, uh, and some uh, Salt Cures, I believe, was in game yeah. one as well. I think we saw, yeah, uh, Donut didn't really bring much to, to deal with the Knackle stack in game one, especially yeah. if Executor doesn't have a clean, isn't, isn't able to, isn't there when Knackle stack comes out. <laughs> uh, so, so yeah, it's just about seeing, I, I think the Knackle stack is really the clincher in this match. Obviously with Sableye is like a, a big supporting piece as well. Yeah. Um, 
All right, so let's take a look at this game two here. Give it a shot. Um, we lead with the sun for donut. Classic, classic sun. With the, uh, the the purple color stipulation draft portion of Electric's <laughs> team. Mm -hmm. uh, and DD's smart to potentially stop a fake out. Yeah, a fake out, but, but nah, it's just the rain. rain just the rain dance. Boom burst next to a ghost. Always, always yeah. excellent. Just takes 40% and switches back out. It does get the sun set up again. And yeah. helping hand. Modest. I was just, so, the crit. Does the crit yeah. matter? Um, like I don't possibly right because it uh, terror right yeah terror to fire yeah. so it's not taken uh, super effective but in psychic terrain stab like life it's orb. still yeah life orb like it's still huge damage and toxicity isn't that bulky right it's a Pokemon that really wants to be going first with something mm -hmm. like you know quash support or tailwind or um, you know the occasional scarf or whatever um, so it seems unlikely that it would uh that it would have mattered but i did not actually check the check the calcs on that yeah uh, we get uh here we get a rain set up again and yep finally the, hitting some the, sand steer storms yeah uh, well in the rain it has to yeah well true in the rain it has to uh and i like hitting the rain dance again right you, you yeah got, uh, Electric got punished on that nine tail switch in to uh, to reset the sun uh, on turn two. And I think Donut, I think Donut knows it's happening because like otherwise you would bring in the nine tails here to try to get the speed advantage with Executor. But but even then, it's kind of like Electric's pinned them where there's not really a good answer if they do just click Rain Dance. Yeah, if they just hit Rain Dance again and. Um... I don't know if we learned the item on the Sableye game one. I do know it gets one shot, so we know it's not Sash. But uh, you know, if it had been that Sash, potentially, uh, just let it stick around a little longer to just be even more annoying. Could have been even more brutal. But um, the Sableye gets to uh, yeah, the weather team against Prankster. Crazy annoying. Uh, abs absolutely, I would much prefer to be the Prankster team. Uh, rather than the weather team in that particular matchup. But, yeah, um, of course. Yeah, Sableye just getting to stick around, uh, some, do some helping hand. Uh, double KO on the Sandseer Storm there. And then yep. Donut brings in the last two. Wide guard. Uh, yeah, really good wide guard from Donut. Makes sense kind of bring it. Kind of what they need to maybe still have a chance at this, right? Like a, free, yeah. a free turn to... You know, you can, maybe you hope that they're not going to click Rain Dance, although it's super safe for them to yeah. do that. Uh, you know, maybe your heat boosted or your sun boosted heat wave then has a chance at maybe killing that Sableye. Uh, well, no, it doesn't. But um, you know, the the goal is just to get some damage off. I think yeah, I think like, it's it's a pretty gotta, done set at this point, but you gotta you gotta hope for something, and the wide guards are really good bring. But this is the perfect move from Electric. Just, yeah. you know, taunt. Sableye's not under too much threat. And even if they are, you don't really care. So you can just taunt them, get rid of the wide guard, and then Sansir Storm clinches it for sure. And just another double KO. Uh, Lando doing all the damage in that set, but... I mean, Sableye was the Sableye star. Being the being the star for sure. And uh, well done to our first 0-3 to 4-3. Uh, coach here this season 12 of the BBLS very very cool to see Sableye pop off like that it's one of the mons I've wanted I, I, I've heard so much good about but haven't seen things that have truly like impressed me as much as people have talked about it and then that this this set really showed me the power of it for sure Electric used it very well Absolutely. Um, Jordan's used it to some to some good success in the past. Um, I've had it uh, a couple of times, VBLN and VBLS, um, to less success, but it was never Sableye's fault. <laughs> <laughs> um, one of my favorite mons ever since Prankster started showing up. But uh, yeah, immune to expanding force has Prankster weather. 
it's perfect for the matchup it's it's perfect in the matchup and it really got to show that off here Mm -hmm. um well done to electric and well done to sableye all right uh moving on here to uh firefalls versus furat um this is game three of uh of this set um furat won game one right um so puts fire putting firefalls in the back foot for game two and game three uh, for their season to continue they need to uh win out uh and they kind of got crushed in game one but um game two close firefalls won on a little bit of a ferrat maybe forgot about the heat wave and so rage powdered in a situation where that was irrelevant uh and could have maybe uh got some got some more damage with the volcarona uh, and maybe one but you know uh misplays happen yeah misplays happen you know you take them because you're gonna give them sometimes too so for sure uh so game three all everything to play for here right and um a really strong lead in turn one from from firefalls here Yep. Um, this is the same lead as game two for Firefalls, but did not um, reveal the Terra Ground and the Earthquake to just, just kill the Goldengo in one shot. And because uh, uh, game one, or well, game two, it had um, uh, double edged and killed the Rotom uh, yep. in, uh, on turn one. And so Volcarona there, um, rage rage powdering rage to powder. to to pull it. I, I mean, Golding is a ghost type, so I know. mean it gets throat chop, right? But yeah, it, or, and, yeah, it also gets the throat chop, um, which you know could have been you know a single target issue for the for Ferret. But uh, yeah, earthquake doing doing eighty five to the Volcarona and just killing the Godango. A pretty pretty brutal turn one there. Yeah, um, it's just that it just feels secret. it feels so good if your fire falls now. Like I, it, you you got the tailwind up. You have speed control. Volcarona is basically well, it's not basically useless now because it has the citrus, but it's in a really tough spot. So it is going to match the tailwinds there. Uh, we're going to break a whimsicott sash, and then just predicting the protect Brave pretty bird. well. Brave bird. Yeah, I mean, yeah. Murkrow just gets to look really good and show off here in the, the latter half of this battle, which is crazy to say on turn two, but we're kind of in the latter half of the battle already, right? Yes, it's a quick one. It's a quick yeah. one for sure. Uh, levitate Weezing coming in here. Uh, Firefall's using just... all three abilities on Weezing over the course of this season. Uh, yeah, Misty so cool. Explosion, or Misty Terrain to, uh, to explode. Um obviously the neutralizing gas a lot of the time just because it's great and then uh levitate this week uh to pair next to terra ground earthquake i assume and then yeah. the Moltres just comes in here and just gets to you know style at the you know kind of clean up what was really murkrow's uh murkrow's game this uh yeah. this third game but well done to firefalls really well done good job saving the the terra ground earthquake for game three as well like it's fine, especially if you seems like you really planned around it with having the wheezing, uh, be levitate. So to be able to save something that seems so core to your strategy all the way for a game three in such a uh, in such an important set, I think that takes a lot of a lot of guts. It's very impressive. So because I I mean I hundred percent agree with you, right? Uh, because we had this levitate, we had. The two flying types as well. I mean, they're likely coming anyway, right? But like, mm-hmm. you know, you're still Terra Ground Earthquake is is a pretty high investment thing to do on your Tauros. Uh, but I think it's much more likely that game two, Firefalls just capitalized on not having to Terra Ground to just yes. take a KO with a with a double edge and then switch out. Uh, much more than it was saved for game three, but for yeah. sure, regardless. For sure, especially because it was also in front of Rotom, doesn't make as much sense. But it's still cool that I guess it was cool that that tech didn't have to be shown until game three, and you get yeah. to show it in game three. 
Yeah, it's that's just one of those core ways. Yeah. Alrighty, so let's close this one out with a full set here. We've got uh, Tux Mux versus Jsr, our third, um, our third O three to three three, and again we don't. Uh, uh, we don't hide from spoilers here on the Weekly Heat or at any point in my life uh, because spoilers is a, is a way that uh, marketing companies have poisoned people's brains into thinking they don't want to know things. Uh, but this is just a, that's just one of the many hills that I might end up dying on one day. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, t so Tuckbox is going to win this set, uh, but it is a fun fun set throughout. And uh, yeah. both both players get some get some good licks and get some good uh, some good tech. We've got uh, some fun stuff here. So go ahead and fire it up since we got three battles to watch. So we got scream the tail. yes the the yeah. scream tail. Uh, it's probably the most versatile mon in the in oh the, I love the having it. Format. Uh, hey, I did too. Ago, it I was think? so yeah. good. Yeah, we've both had it. Yeah. It's yeah, awesome, it, it's awesome so mod. fun. So fun. Uh, the knockoff, unfortunately, into a booster energy Pokemon. Yeah, into a booster energy it. Pokemon. But, you know, I mean... It and I get why. Is... You can't use a grass move into it, so... Yeah, and or it's you certainly can, a scarier like... Pokemon right away, right? Yeah. Yeah, so I get, I get why you why you have to knock off, but it's just it feels so bad into a booster energy Pokemon. Yeah, so we do see the... Uh, we see the Sing here on, uh, on turn two, and yeah. now... Maybe see maybe see what's going on a little bit here. Living the fiery dance is nice. Yeah, and very Iron Moth nice. doesn't get the boost, which is also nice. Screamtail just barely lives. And we get the <laughs> doubled speed off the blunder policy. And there's the sucker punch anyway, to just clean it up. Yeah, at that point. Uh but this at at this point, uh Tux I imagine doesn't feel super great, right? It does have the tailwind up, so can like, you know, sucker punch an iron moth or something like that. But uh, lichen rock does have the accelerock. Both yeah. Pokemon very low, definitely die to an accelerock. So, yeah, and you got to think you're losing speed control after this. Yeah, because yeah, yep. Yeah. And then agility here, also awesome. That's wild for sure. Yeah, um, lichen rock just. Cleanly gets two KOs, a fiery dance at Quark yes. Drive speed special attack plus uh plus one boost is gonna clean that up. And then it's a three V one. Uh I mean if there are Pokemon that can do it, it's well it's Basculegion male. Maybe it's yeah, not Basculegion female, one. but <laughs> uh you know, but it does have Terra Water Aqua Jet, which is threatening. Yeah, and a mo you know it was in front of two months weak to water and then the yeah, Taurus... now it's not <laughs> yeah and now it's not <laughs> but, so uh, now it's less threatening but you know it is what it is j star gets to clean up that uh game one game one and tuxmox in the in the same position that firefalls was in now has to win two mm -hmm. uh, i think j star was also three and three right yes j star yeah. was also so this three is this three. is a win and in for both players uh j star feeling gotta be feeling good after that right um your your yeah, sing for sure. your sing worked your sing blunder policy i mean you know you wish you had gotten to put some i, I would rather just hit two sings than have yeah. a doubled speed and then die to a sucker punch but yeah make citrus uh, berry look better or something yeah, but something. it's Make's cool and it's so cool and it and puts threat on so for the rest bulky. of the set yeah, Screamtail's yeah. so bulky anyway that you can kind of do something like that on a on, on a mod like that, and like sure. you know when you hit your sings, it's it's basically upside either way, right? Yeah. It's especially either... if you, if just especially if you need the booster energy on your Iron Moth, if you think that that's really important, then I can get why you're like, well, it's like a delayed boost in speed, and it's doubled, so Tornadus, it's more than just a booster speed you get anyways yeah and i mean like it's a coin a flip right it. it's either mm -hmm. your pokemon your pokemon is asleep and then screamtail gets to do whatever it wants or its speed is doubled and screamtail gets to do whatever it wants right yep so, yeah it's either a, it's either a sleep or agility so you yeah, can, exactly. you'll take that yeah that, that's a that's a coin flip with no tails as far as i'm concerned 
Um, all right, so game two. Um, we get the Screamtail and Tauros versus the same lead from Tux. Uh, mm-hmm. See if the fake out again. Uh, Bleak Windstorm hits both and does a lot more damage yep. um, into Tauros. Lo- and I love the fake out into the Screamtail because you know it's not Covert Cloak because you know what it is. So makes sense right. just to stop it from doing anything. Then you get the, the Bleak Wind off. Because you know you're not under that much threat from the Tauros. Well, we do. your Tornadus isn't, I mean. Yeah, <laughs> right. Um, we see Citrus Berry, so probably Cud Chew on, uh, on Tauros since it didn't intimidate. We saw a berry. Uh, hit two Bleak Winds again. Yep. Uh, the, bleak wind, uh, the, the Bleak Wind speed drop is pro- was probably important for making sure the Urshifu went first. Um, uh, yes, I, th- I think very likely. Uh, which on, meant that uh, Tuck turn right here uh, yeah tux one. might have been able to save might have been able to save Terra, but you know that depends on what what tux's speed is potentially and what the scream tail speed is so maybe they didn't know uh for sure they didn't have that information yet and now you do you know the scream tail minus one is slower than your urshifu which is important and now we can uh maybe get the get the tailwind up here we have a, a urshifu that can handle uh Excel rocks from mm-hmm. the uh, from the dusk rock and can kind of just ignore everything else uh, now that it's terra poisoned. Uh, and it's gonna switch out anyway. Yeah. <laughs> We're just gonna just gonna play this one slow. Oh hey goose, yeah. welcome. Glad to have you. Um, or what? We're in game two of J Star versus Tux Mux. We get the tailwind. Tailwind. Yep, yeah, makes sense. Lives it when it's not already at plus one there. Yeah. On the wave uh, crash, fire dance makes sense, but yeah, now you have the aqua jet. If yeah, it get lives. another oh, speed oof. drop, so I love this turn, right? Yeah, um, the previous turn, let's go, let's go back a turn, right? Um, you've got the lichen rock protects, set tailwind, fire dance, sure, sure, and then wave crash puts iron moth in obvious aqua jet mode or aqua jet yes. right you have uh tux has tailwind up and so it's going to go before any acceleroc um so mm-hmm. the the basculesian aqua jet is like if it goes here iron moth is down you've been like j star has invested a lot in that it makes it a 3v1 j star is incentivized to protect on this next turn but Tux gets to have all those same thoughts too, right? And so he just, yeah. you know, throws a spread move out, whatever, whatever, and just wave crashes into the Lycan Rock. Makes tons Killing of it. sense. And now he can just Perfect Aqua Jet on the next turn. Excellently played these final two turns of, uh, of game two here. Well done to Tux. Really well played by Tux. Really, really well played. And then we have a game three, which we will... Uh, close us out here on um any other fun final thoughts before we play this uh before we play this last game i don't think play I us out on this third <laughs> yep i'm just going over my four pages of notes here i took uh on on matches this week but uh i think we I think we covered basically everything so let's um let's watch this last game here so this was for this is for everything for both players, right? Mm-hmm. And the whole get, season on this we, game. Yeah. One of them gets to keep going and one of them ends the season on a loss, which is rough. Yeah. Uh, the taunt is beautiful taunt here. Is nice. Yeah. You know Kept it wants to game sing. Three. Yep. You know it wants to sing and now you're basically saying your boost your blunder policy set doesn't do anything this game. Yeah. And I mean you know the if you're not leading the fake out right that's that's kind of where you want to be right you want to neutral, neutralize and, that fast mon and Just the terror is perfect i yeah. gotta imagine that's that's ev to live i would right yeah i would think so probably and, and then still and just hitting every bleak win yeah uh yeah and the we terror see the was also here. smart Stone golem could just tank stuff Yes, 
beefier than it has any range of i mean actually it, it seems like it should be very beefy actually but uh yeah and the raichu here to to close out game three um yeah golurk gets a kill the encore there is interesting then, for sure yeah so if, if it thunderbolts you, it's so it's on really winning the, position um the torn trying to tornadus. encore the tornadus into protect on the for sure from the previous turn but that's kind of a scary one to do because like if it's going to uh what do we see we saw taunt bleak win and protect um did we see, have we seen a fourth move out of it at all oh yeah tailwind uh, of course of course yeah yeah, yeah. So, so like if it could also be Tux... taunting the tailwind or encoring the tailwind because then it would be encored into tailwind which is also useless sure so right. i guess you kind of have a 50 percent uh still maybe a little a little sketchy but uh you know, I mean, yeah. you know, makes sense at least. Yeah, I see the I see the logic, but then the the obvious thing is like, you're you have a Raichu on the field, which is threatening the Tornadus, and it can't protect now. So it makes there's also the thing sure. of just like it wants to leave. So I feel like if if J Star Dude gets this right, if J-Star and gets the this ground right, and your ground type is dead, so yeah, you can it, just it makes start throwing thunderbolts, just, right? Yeah, I could see that as well. So ends up just being the wrong play in this situation for how Tux plays it, but I, I see what they were going for. It's just an interesting decision. Oh, yeah, Heaven brings up a good point, too. It could have been uh, Anger Point with Frost Breath Cryogonal rather than ah. uh, Cud Shoot with the Citrus Berry, but, you know, Cryogonal never comes, so or never came, mm -hmm. at least this match, so. Uh, don't know. Yep, we get a double protect turn here, just... Uh, yep things go a little get the tailwind so that we're faster than any potential encore after that double protect but, makes sense you, know, you got just a trade there, there. Yeah. so so we've got a uh raichu that um we're gonna learn here has um has sash so we're definitely still in it right we want some bleak winds to miss uh raichu can can get this urshifu dead um that's Even one. This is step like, one. That's great. Step one works. We see the sash. That's great. We get the par paralysis, which is fine, but it, basically irrelevant because we targeted the Yershifu anyway. We get a second, sec get a second bleak wind miss, which and is the nice. sash is revealed on and the we reveal the sash, <laughs> which is what matters. Crazy it means you sash need three misses sash. now. Three in a row is is tough. Uh, I mean, you know, two in a row is not super likely. But uh, three in a row is increasingly unlikely. Yeah, and, uh, and there we go. It does end wins, up going down. Wins on one HP. Yeah, season came down to to Tornadus. Yeah, on one HP. Very impressive. Very cool. Excellently played by both coaches. Uh, J Star, just super commanding in game one what's up here's my pokemon deal with them and uh tux you know says okay well let's see if i can do that and yeah. uh gets and a lot unlucky there at the end but i mean would have had to get really yeah. unlucky at the very end to yeah. to lose there but i feel like a lot of the difference was in game one tux wasn't able to protect the tornadoes that well which meant speed control was not there for most of the set for most of the game and then games, at least game three, I'm trying to remember game, I believe in game two as well, Tornadus ended up being very important for just maintaining speed control throughout the uh, th throughout the whole set, the rest of the games, to, to make sure you they won, despite J-Star's team being uber fast otherwise. Yeah. All it takes is that one HP, right? Mm -hmm. and, uh, yeah. Focus Sash? Another one of the, another one of those very great items that you, know, you kind of have to have a reason not to bring it every week. Yep, it's just always it's always good if you've got a single frail Pokemon on your team, yeah. which everybody probably does. So we do still have three games that need to be played, uh, but we've got this coming week to to get those games played and to get our round one matches picked uh, by our first seeds. Uh, and then we'll get our uh, we'll get the the bracket out and get the first round of these playoffs underway uh, the following week. Um, any parting wisdom 
for the uh, for the unwashed masses. They're purple. Good luck. Good good luck in playoffs. I hope you. I mean, you better hope you don't play me. Or Ooh. realistically, <laughs> realistically, you better hope you don't play Colby or Tay, as they are undefeated. <laughs> but you know, also hope you don't play me. Maybe. Excellent. Excellent. Well, good luck to you. And uh, thank you. Peace. Bye.